Joining us right now for more on the markets is Mohamed El Arian. He is Allianz and Gramercy advisor and president of Queens College, Cambridge. Mohamed, first of all, do you put any stock in the Super Bowl indicator? What kind of year do you think this is going to be? So I do not, even though I must tell you, that was one of the best games I've ever watched. And it was a very humbling right the experience end. for a Jets fan to see what other teams can do. Um, so I don't. Listen, if you want to know what's going to happen in the year, follow the two-year yield at this point. I think that's the, indic the market indicator that has the more, most information. And if it continues going up, I would be worried. If it comes back down towards 4% where we were not so long ago, I would be certainly more bullish. It's been going higher. Um, in fact, it was higher of the yield this morning versus the 10-year yield, which was a little bit lower. Um, look, it's doing this because I guess the expectation is the Fed's not going to reverse immediately. Is that what the two years telling you? Yeah. Also, we, the market is starting to sense that the very comforting disinflation story is more complex than we'd like it to be. Um, you know, the comforting disinflation story was a simple one. Goods disinflation continues. Service inflation comes down. That wonderful concept that Chair Powell calls core services X housing, that comes down. And lo and behold, we don't have an inflation problem. And now we're starting to see certain goods reverse the disinflationary process. So there's a lot more uncertainty about inflation. And because of that, there's more uncertainty about the Fed. That's what's been happening over the last few days. Fixed income has been reflecting this. The equity market still isn't there. You mean like used car prices? You, car price, prices is one. There's energy is the other one that we may not get um, the, 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 the continued disinflation. You know, people, consensus now is that headline may come at 0.5 for January and core at 0.4. That's elevated from where we've been. And that's kind of a confirmation signal we got from the BLS last week, which did upgrade, I think, the last three months of numbers that we've seen in terms of inflation. Yeah, they also sort of um, put a qualifier on, on the nice disinflationary narrative. Remember, that's a critical word, disinflation. Chair Powell said it 11 times at his press conference, and the market loved that. So it is important that we continue with it and that's why tomorrow's number um, and the ones that follow are so important, is could we bet on continued goods disinflation for a while? Because we know service disinflation is not going to happen for a very long time. There was a lot of Fed speak after Chair Powell said that. As you mentioned, he said it 11 times in his speech. That had to have been something he was signaling. You think he's changed his mind since then? So most of the Fed speak that came afterwards, I interpreted as correcting the market's understanding of what they heard Chair Powell on a couple of occasions. Um, so the, the Fed speak that followed Chair Powell was much more hawkish than what the chair actually said. And the markets reflected that um, when, when they heard it. So I don't know where we are right now in terms of the Fed narrative. And that's one thing that the marketplace has gotten confused by, is we hear different things, even within the same press conference, depending on whether you hear the beginning or the rest of it. And you saw that with the price action during the last press conference. Very little happened in the beginning. And then we were off to the races when this inflation get, got repeated 10 times after the initial um, <coughs> mention. 